Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the living stone, and we offer ourselves to you as living stones. We are your temple. We are your holy priesthood. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us into your family. Thank you for making us joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Thank you for inviting us to come to you through the living stone. And we declare the praises of you, the mighty one, the gracious one, our Lord and Savior who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, we bless your construction project here at Harvest Time. We bless the harvest that is here and is yet to come. We bless phase two for fruitfulness as the good news is shared and as the lost are found. And we bless those who will come and receive freedom. Those who will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those who will receive healing in the name of Jesus. And we bless our next generation of living stones. We bless them for righteousness and peace and the power and joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. We bless them to partner well in the spread of the gospel. We bless them to enlarge the kingdom as they invite their friends to church, as they evangelize, and as they make Jesus famous among the lost. Bring glory to yourself through your living stones and bless the advancement of your love and your kingdom in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everything that you've done for us in our lives and for helping us build phase one, the building we are in right now. As we look to build phase two, please help us keep in mind that we need to build phase two as one, like a family. Family is always there for you, just like the family here at Harvest Time will work. So let's pray that we would have the unity, walk in accordance to the calling to which we've been called. Father God, thank you so much for the love that you show us, for your love that you've bestowed on us, for, the, 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 for, for helping us to get to where we're at now with the influence and the calling that we have. Thank you so much for building phase, phase one, that you put on the hearts of people to walk in unity, to build phase one, to go to the cornfield, tear it down, and put up a building, that we would be a light post, we would be a lighthouse to this region, we would be a lighthouse across this place. Father, I ask in Jesus name that there would be such a unity in the people of Harvest Time Church that we would have such a unity and a bond of peace molding and, and keeping together the unity in the Spirit of God I pray God that you would help us to walk in accordance walk in a manner that is worthy of the calling which you've entrusted us God we know that this dream this this isn't just a, a dream man-made but it's a vision and a dream that you have for this region for this time for this moment God I pray in Jesus name that we would rise up and walk in a manner the people of God financially. Lord, the hands that have been uh, restricting, Lord, the flow of funds uh, and leaving the people of God um, with less than enough. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that grip would be broken definitively over Harvest Time Church, over the families of Harvest Time Church, over the people of Harvest Time Church. Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, well, I have to make a confession to you. I'm very bad about reading my emails because I get literally hundreds of emails every day. And I get so many emails every day that if I don't read one when I see it come into my inbox, by the time I get back to it, it's buried under hundreds of others. And so I didn't read my email from Pastor Ruth about the agenda this evening. And so I didn't know that Ileana and Joshua were going to be giving a testimony just before I shared. And so I want to share with you from Ruth, chapter 2. <laughs> I believe the Lord just wants to confirm his word. And, and listen, that word that I gave that day, it was Father's Day, and I preached about Naomi, a bitter old woman. But it was a word for a season. And I just want to refresh your mind of a couple things, and then we're going to make the declarations, and we're going to move forward this evening. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1. 
The Bible says now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I have found favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and she began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they called. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, she is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and she has worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Beloved, this is the word that I want to share with you. I'm going to uh, talk this evening uh, about the ability to get wealth. And Pastor Nick is going to talk about the ability to retain wealth. So I, I want to talk a little bit this evening uh, about how God uh, enables us to get wealth how he makes provision for us. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, it says, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the ability to get wealth and so confirms his covenant. You might think it's because you're clever, but he made you clever. You might think it's because you work hard, but he gave you the opportunity. How many of you are thankful for the opportunity to work? He gave you the opportunity to work hard. He gave you the capacity to work hard. He gave you the ability to work hard. And what I want to uh, kind of just put in your heart this evening is that the way that God provides for us is through a partnership. He uses our hands. He uses the work of our hands, but he adds his blessing to the work of our hands so that it brings an uncommon result. It brings an uncommon return. When God wanted to bless a, a widow who was down to her last cup of flour and her last drop of oil, he, he said, use your hands and bake me a cake and see what I do. When God wanted to bless a widow whose sons were going to be taken away by the creditors, he said, go out and use your hands and gather every jar in the city and begin to pour and then your miracle will come. When God wanted to bless Peter with a catch of fish, he said, Peter, throw out the net again. Peter was tired, y'all. Yeah? He, he had worked all night. His back was sore, his shoulders were sore, his legs were sore, his arms were sore. He said, Jesus, I fished all night and I haven't catch, caught anything, nevertheless, at your word. And he used his hands and threw out the net and a net breaking, boat sinking catch of fish came back. When he wanted to provide wine for a couple who, who were about to be embarrassed at a wedding feast, he told men, go draw the water. You see, we have to, we have to use our hands. God works in partnership with us. We work and God adds his blessing to the work that we do. So looking at Ruth, I want to just uh, make some quick statements about how God provides. And then I want us to pray into that this evening. And I want to, to make some declarations that the Lord has put onto my heart. First of all, when God wants to provide, he provides an opportunity, an open door for you to work. We're going to pray for people who do not have jobs tonight. And we're going to pray that quickly you're going to have a job. We're going to pray for people that are underemployed, that you're working part-time, you really need to work full-time. You're not getting enough hours that you need to work. Uh, you, you need the opportunity to, to, uh, to upgrade, to do a, get a better job. We're going to pray for jobs and for better jobs this evening. You know, Ruth, Ruth, if you will, Ruth, Ruth went through Craigslist. Ruth went through the classifieds. She, she went through the one ads. She went, she found the opportunity. She said, Father, let me go, let me go and glean. Uh, I can't do much of anything. 
I, 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 there's no opportunities, there's no openings for me, but, but let me just go see what I can find. She sought out an opportunity to work and, and God gave her an open door. And tonight we are gonna believe God to provide an open door of opportunity for every person that comes to Harvest Time Church and needs a job. I am declaring tonight that the unemployment rate is going to be 0.0% at Harvest Time Church. God provides a, a, an opportunity to work and, and then God causes as it turned out and just thens to happen. You remember, I forgot that I said she gleaned like a fiend. That was funny preaching. That was a good line right there. But God caused as it turned out and just then is to happen. Ruth said, let me go out and see what I can do. Let me go see what I can find. Let me, let me go see if I can find somewhere where I can go and work. And as it turned out, she ended up in the field of Boaz, the one man that could open the door for her future. And beloved, listen as it turned out and just thens are going to happen. Ruth was getting ready to leave the field and just then Boaz showed up and said, who is that woman over there? And the way that God provides is, is he causes it as it turns out and just then he's going to cause the opportunity for you to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right person that has your opportunity for employment, your opportunity to get gain and to get wealth. I believe that that is coming for every person who will grab onto that this evening. I believe that it is coming fast. It's coming immediately. How does God provide? He causes people of noble character to be drawn to you. He causes people who are good, people who are decent, people who have integrity and compassion to take note of you. He causes people in authority to come to your defense. Boaz noticed Ruth. He was drawn to her. He was attracted to her. He, he liked her work ethic. He said, who is that woman who is gleaning like that? And it opened something in his heart, and he rose up to defend her. She was having a little trouble out in the field. The, the workmen were giving her a little bit of a hard time. They were catcalling to her, and they were harassing her a, a little bit. And God raised up Boaz to be a shield and to protect her. How does God provide? He causes people in authority to create new positions just for you. Boaz valued Ruth so much. He did something unprecedented. He did something unheard of. He, he created a position for her that didn't exist. Everybody in the field had their, their place, their pecking order, and, and, and he created a, a brand new model. He created something, a, a niche just for her, a, a place where she could go. And so she wasn't with the harvesters. She wasn't with the gleaners anymore. She was in her own special place of employment that he had carved out just for her. That kind of favor is going to fall on the people of Harvest Time Church. God causes people in authority to promote you over the heads of those who were once over you. I like that. You ended up the lady of the manor, Ileana. And God is going to do that. Listen, I'm praying in this season for promotions that represent not just one rung on the ladder or two rungs on the ladder, but I'm praying for promotions that, run, that, that, that uh, represent five and six rungs on the ladder, that God is going to lift you up over the heads of those that you once reported to and answered to. You know what I pray for supervisors? Because we always pray, we always pray for blessings. So I say, Lord, let that supervisor who's standing in the way of that promotion, bless them with a big fat job far away from here. Bless them with a big fat job in Chicago. Bless them with a big fat job in Sydney. Bless them with a big fat job in, in LA or in, in Dallas. Lord, up and out, up and out. Bless them real good and then move your people way ahead. Let them surge forward. You should start praying that way for your boss. They say, Lord, bless my boss. Bless him big time. Bless him, God, with an assignment that pays unbelievable money in Moscow. Bless him with... <laughs> Bless him, bless him with a job that pays just amazing money, you know, somewhere else halfway around the world. And uh, Lord, let him move out and let me move up. Bless him and bless me. You know, God, God will bless Pharaoh's house for Joseph's sake. He'll bless your company. He'll bless your division. 
He'll bless your department. Every other department in the company might, might, might not be going anywhere, but because you are in the department, God will cause your department to be blessed. Had a great, had a great testimony from a woman a couple of weeks ago who had her own business, and with the massive, her, her business was connected to the housing market, and with the massive collapse of the housing market in 2008, she had to give up her business and had to go take a job uh, at the bottom of a totem pole in a, in a financial lending institution. Worked her way up a little bit, a little bit at a time. Uh, regional, became the regional man manager over this area. And uh, she, she shared with me a couple weeks ago, she said, Pastor Glenn, our, our bank just got rocked with massive, massive uh, fines from the government and people are losing their jobs left and right. I'm not sure whether they're gonna wanna keep me or not. And she went into a meeting, she was called into a meeting, didn't know what was gonna happen and she found out that her division was number one in the nation. She's not going anywhere. Because God blessed uh, Pharaoh's house for Joseph's sake. How does God provide? He causes you to take home more than your fair share. The first day in the field, Ruth took home three weeks. Uh, the, the men working in the field, the harvesters, she took home in one day three weeks of their wages. And working at that rate in three months of harvest, she would have taken home one year's worth of provision for her house, for she and for her mother-in-law. And I've been praying it since June, and I'm believing God that it is going to fall on this church before December 31st, before the end of the year, three weeks provision in a single day and a year's worth of provision in three months. Beloved, God is a God who provides. He's the God who commands provision over his people. He's the one who gives us the ability to work and to get wealth and so confirms his covenant. So I have a declaration that I'm going to make over you this evening. I want you to stand up on your feet if you would. And I want everybody to participate in this declaration. Uh, really, I'm going to speak it over you. But I want you to, to just reach out with your faith. And I want you to just receive it. And I want you to just grab onto it. And I want you to just say, see, Joshua and Ileana, they said, man, that word was for me. They reached it and they grabbed it with faith. And God showed up and he showed off. And so I want you to do the same thing. I wonder if there's someone, I don't want to, I don't mean to embarrass anybody here, but I wonder especially if there's someone here tonight and you need a job or you need a better job, you're, you're unemployed or you're underemployed, I want you to lift up your hand very high if you would. I don't want to embarrass you in any way, but if you are unemployed or you are underemployed, lift up your hand high. All right, listen, believers, go around these folks, would you? Would you go around them and lay hands on them? There's hands everywhere. Come on, I need everyone in the room. Just, just find these people and lay hands on them. Let's make sure. Lift up your hand high if you're, if you're one of those folks. You're unemployed or you're underemployed and you need a job. This is going to be a history-making night. Everything's going to be different after this evening. Thank you, Jesus. I feel it coming in the spirit right now. Everything's going to be different. God is about to pour out. He's about to release. He's about to overflow on his people. I want to tell you how God is going to provide for phase two. He's going to provide through a boy that has some loaves and fishes. He's going to provide through a widow that has nothing left but a horn of oil. He's going to provide through a widow who has nothing left but a cup of flour and a drop of oil. He's going to provide through people that really don't have anything but faith. And faith is better than wealth because it is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Father. Come on, I'm going to pray and I want you all to receive it. I want you to agree with me in Jesus' name and just reach out and receive this right now. Harvest Time Church, I declare over you in the name of Jesus a season of opportunity to get wealth. I declare over you a season of opportunity to partner with God in the release of provision and financial blessing. I declare over you the opportunity to work. In the name of Jesus, I speak employment over every unemployed person. Jobs, jobs, 
jobs, jobs. I speak the opportunity work and the ability to work. In the name of Jesus, I speak employment over every underemployed person. Father, I pray that the unemployment rate at Harvest Time Church would be 0.0%. Father, I pray that there would be no one without a job who should have a job. Father, I pray encouragement for everyone who has lost heart in the job marketplace. Father, I pray for new incentive right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for new fire in the belly. I pray for new strength. I pray for new ideas. I pray for the removal of any mindset that is preventing them from searching for or from securing a new job. Father, I pray that you would give them eyes like you gave Ruth. I pray that you'd give them eyes to see a door of opportunity where it appears that there is no opportunity, I pray that you would give them an anointing on their eyes, Father, to see a door of opportunity where they looked and didn't see one before. Father, please release jobs and better jobs in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every small business owner and I pray for every practice, Lord, represented in this congregation. I pray grace, Lord, on small business owners and practitioners. I pray, Lord, grace to expand. I pray grace to increase profitability. I pray for grace to manage with efficiency. I pray for grace, Lord, to bring on and to organize staff in a way, Lord, that structures for maximum capacity and maximum efficiency. Father, I pray for a release of entrepreneurial grace over your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for grace for inventions, grace for new projects, grace for new products, grace for new services. I pray wisdom, Lord, to devise new things and wisdom to see them all the way through to implementation and maximum profitability. Father, I pray you'd raise up business owners and entrepreneurs, new businesses. Lord, I pray Lord, that they like a meadow of wildflowers, Lord. I pray that they would erupt all over the congregation. Lord, I pray for new divisions to small businesses, new arms of small businesses that bring in more profit than could ever possibly be imagined, Lord. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Harvest Time Church, I further declare over you a season of as it turned out and just then. I declare over you, in the name of Jesus, a season of divine appointments, a season of chance encounters that are not at all by chance. I declare a season of supernatural serendipity. I declare a season of comedies of errors that lead to new open doors in the marketplace, in the workplace. Father, I thank you for guiding your people to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right people in the right frame of mind under the right circumstances. Father, I pray that every selfless act of love and service and giving your people have done would bring a return blessing on them in the most surprising and in the most unusual ways. Harvest Time Church, I further declare over you a season when people of noble character are going to be drawn to you. I declare a suddenly season when your hard work is recognized and appreciated. I declare a suddenly season when your faithfulness and integrity is recognized and appreciated. I declare a suddenly season when owners and top executives are going to be attracted to you, when they're going to like what they see, when they're going to inquire about you. I declare a suddenly season when owners and bosses are going to hear a good report about you from the lips of those who once hassled you. Father, in the name of Jesus, send Boazes, send men of character, send upstanding men out into the field to discover your people and promote them. Harvest Time Church, I declare over you a season of divine protection in your place of employment. I declare over you that God is going to cause unlikely advocates to rise to your defense. I declare to you that every hostile act against you is going to be exposed and excoriated. I declare that plots to oust you are going to backfire, that no weapon formed against you shall succeed, and that every tongue that rises against you shall be silenced in the name of Jesus. 
Father, I speak safety in the workplace. I speak physical safety in the workplace. Lord, I speak uh, that you'd protect your people from workplace accidents and workplace incidents and acts of violence, Lord. I pray that you'd protect your people from every possible lawsuit, Lord, and threat of legal action. Father, I feel in my spirit that a settlement is coming in favor of your people. Lord, that a legal judgment, that a legal, legal settlement, that a legal decision is coming and it's going to bring a, a cash, a, a, a deluge of cash, a, 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 a outpouring of cash to fall. Harvest Time Church, I declare over you that owners and top executives are going to create new positions just to accommodate you. I declare that unprecedented measures are going to be taken to hold on to you. I declare that they're going to beg you to stay and they're going to give you incentives to stay. I declare perks and pay raises, 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 perks and pay raises raises over the people of God. In the name of Jesus, Harvest Time Church, I declare a season of extraordinary promotions in the workplace. I declare promotion from the Lord. I declare promotions that represent not just one rung on the ladder, but many rungs. I declare promotions to positions for which you are not considered eligible or qualified by the standards of men, but grace will be on you to do the job. I declare that you will be promoted over the heads of those who were once over you and hassled you. Harvest Time Church, I declare that your takeaway will be more than your fair share. I speak over you in the name of Jesus. Three weeks of provision in a single day and a year's worth of provision in three months. Father, as you've spoken, so now would you also do. I pray, lift up your hands, everybody. Lift up your hands all over this place. I pray that you would anoint all the work of our hands. I pray that everything we put our hands to would bring a good result. I pray that everything we do would bring a good return for the care of our families and the support of your church. I pray that everything we touch would prosper. Touch each other right now. Come on, just touch each other because everything we touch is going to prosper. Everything we touch is going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, hey! everything we touch is going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, everything we touch, everything we touch is going to prosper. Everything we touch is going to prosper. In the name of Jesus, everything we touch is going to prosper. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big praise in this place. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father, open the windows of heaven. Pour out so much blessing, God, that your people can't contain it. Give bread to the eater. Give seed to the sower. Make all grace abound to us so that at all times we have everything we need to abound in every good work. Father, I pray you would make full provision for your people. Let your people be fully resourced. Let your church be fully resourced. Let the general fund be fully resourced. Let the missions fund be fully resourced. Let phase two be fully resourced. I pray it would be 100% paid for and done. I pray that all debt would be removed from off of your people. Father, we pray that you would provide, God. I am the God who provides all your needs. Cut to two, not in proportion to the need, but in proportion to my ability to provide. Come on, church. Give him glory right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to rejoice? Stand on your feet and sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. I sing because. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody just say, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated in his presence tonight. Praise the Lord. Pastor Glenn was showing us how to come into that field of blessing. And I was going to share a few things about how to keep those blessings and how to make sure that the devourer is rebuked for our sakes. Amen. 
And the Holy Spirit just gave you an object lesson because that is the first way. I'm going to talk about Malachi chapter 3 in a minute, but see, the Holy Spirit wanted to show you that that is the first way to evict the enemy from your field. Do you know when the children of Judah were invaded under King Jehoshaphat, they were surrounded by an army that was coming, a massive army that was coming from every direction. And you know the story. If you don't, you need to go look it up in Second Chronicles 20. And it says that in the face of that army against which they were powerless, it says that they appointed singers who should go out. I'm sorry, I'm from Connecticut. Singers. They appointed singers who should go out in front of that army and praise the beauty of holiness. Now you feel that presence of the Lord as we're worshiping him in the spirit. And just imagine wicked, demonized people that have come to steal, kill, and destroy, confronted with the presence of God released from the lips of his people. And that's how you need to worship what we were just doing. That's how you need to worship the Lord in your home every day. You don't need a worship team. You don't need a Elizabeth or Keith or anybody to come and play over your kitchen table or anything like that. You have the spirit of the living God inside you. And as you release his praises, his glory, his power, his goodness is going to be released in your home. So make sure that your home is a tabernacle of praise in the spirit, just as this place is a tabernacle of praise when we come together. And you'll see those enemies uh, dissolving, attacking each other, tearing each other apart, and they'll be evicted from your land. We're going to uh, just share scripture with you, and we have the words in Malachi 3. And I want to share with you 10 10 quick tithing insights from God in Malachi. 10 tithing insights. It'd be good if you take notes. If you don't take notes, why not? But um, it'd be good if you take notes. It says, uh, beginning verse 8, Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, in what have we robbed you? In the tithe and the offering. You're cursed with a curse for you're robbing me, the nation, all of it. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now with this, says the Lord of hosts, to see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing for you until there is not enough room. And I will rebuke your devourer and he shall not decay the fruit of your ground against you, nor shall your vine miscarry against you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed for you shall be a delight land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Um, ten quick things I want to show you there, insights from God, from God's own mouth, from Malachi. First, to withhold tithes is viewed as robbery by God. You know, throughout history, God has always taught mankind to give him the first portion of what he blesses us with. It was that way under the law that they were living under. It was even that way before the law. We know that Abraham tithed and his children and his grandchildren. The New Testament also speaks of tithes as just an assumed thing. It's assumed we'll do it. Second thing, God wants you to know that this theft can bring a curse. And here, God says the failure to pay tithes had apparently brought one on them. He wanted them to know that this failure to pay the tithe had allowed the enemy to gain access to their lives and had allowed the enemy to gain access to the productivity that God wanted them to experience. The third thing that God wants them to know here is that the storehouses... They were places in the temple area where tithes were brought to support the work of the Levites and the priests. And that shows us that we should tithe to provide food in God's house. It's a good thing to support other ministries that the Lord lays on our hearts, but the tithe should go to the storehouse, to the local church where you worship. Fourth, this is the only place where God says to put him to the test. It's a strange thing, really. We know, right, that God commands us specifically in his word not to put him to the test. But here he does exactly that. You remember Jesus said to the devil, uh, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. But here God encourages it, not as a presumptuous thing, but as an act of humble faith, trusting him for the needed return. You know, I believe that God is insulted in some measure, if I could say it that way, when we don't trust him like that. You know, you can ask God uh, wrong for blessing with a heart of unbelief. 
That's what the children of Israel did in the desert in Psalm 78. And I just, uh, Pastor Glenn, by accident, stuck my notes into that page in my Bible. And I looked down and it says, but they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? You, you hear how that's a wrong way to ask God or put God to the test. And it said that the Lord heard this and it said he was furious. Furious because his people couldn't trust him after seeing everything that he had done for them. God encourages us. He says, put me to the test. And it's not a presumptuous, rude thing in any way, but it's an act of faith where we trust in him. And God says when we do that, number five, fifth insight, God says he will open the windows of heaven and pour blessing into you until there is no more room to contain the blessing. There's a wonderful realm of blessing to come into. He promises to bring us into a place of abundance where, listen, where your only limitation is your ability to receive. Do you know that that's the only limitation that God has on giving to you is how much you can receive? And I like that because there's no limitation on God's ability to give. All of the limitation is here below under his window. Do you follow me? That's the only place where there's limitation. Number six, God says he will rebuke the devourer of your labor. He will forbid the enemy to deprive you of the material blessings that God intends for you. And that's good news. God's giving you some important revelation here, church. First, God wants you to know that there is a devourer out there. There is somebody who wants to come to take your fruit and to take your increase. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we tend to focus I think in that verse on the words kill and destroy because they're so dramatic. But Jesus said, the devil is a thief and he comes to steal. God gives you another good word here. He says there may be a devourer in our field, but God says if we obey him, he will find that devourer and evict him from your premises. Amen. Number seven, God says, this is going to end the cycle of miscarriage in what you're producing. How many of you understand what it is to live under the pattern of two steps forward and three steps backward? You understand what that is. And, and all of you that didn't put your hands up, you're all lying because you've all seen that at one time or another. But God says, I'm going to put an end to that cycle and you will see a full harvest. See, the enemy wants what you produce to die on the vine and not see the light of day. He wants you to miscarry. We understand what miscarriage is. It's, what, it's when what is growing cannot make it all the way out to see the light of day. God says he wants to give you the full harvest so that life will come out of everything that's been sown. I want to say that again. God wants to give us the full harvest so that life will come out of everything that has been sown. Number eight, God says your land will become delightful. God says as we obey him, our land will become delightful. The dry and barren places in our lives will become fruitful. They will no longer be desert places. God says he's going to make for us streams in the desert and pools in the wilderness. You'll come out to a different level, a different realm of blessing where it's less of a struggle to get ahead and stay ahead. See, God wants to bring us to a place where we start to get ahead and then we start to reclaim our land from the desert. God wants us to get out of that mode where by the end of the week, all you have in your pocket is four pennies and a parking ticket. He wants to make your land delightful. Number nine, God says when we obey him in this, that other people will notice and they will say that you are blessed. Other people will see that God is changing our situation, that he's changing your land gradually from a desert to a garden. And this has two results. First, God will give you an opportunity to have a testimony. You know, when people see a blessing in your life, they will want to know how they can get in on it. 
Amen. That's your chance to say, look what the Lord has done. And you can tell them about a God who doesn't just live in a book, but he's alive and well in the here and now, and he's taking care of his people. Amen. A second thing that will happen when your land goes from being a desert to a garden and when you start reclaiming the desert is that people will want to make claims on your generosity. People will think to themselves, I noticed that he seems to have more money, more blessing than he used to have. I wonder if he can help me out. And you know what, church? The Bible says the one who waters will be himself watered. As we become tithers and givers, God will grow your faith. He will take you from learning to have faith to survive to learning to have faith to be generous. And that's good preaching right there. God says all nations will call you blessed because you will have become a delightful land. And then God puts the cherry on top, number 10. He wants you to know from this passage, he's saying that although the enemy once fought against you, the Lord will now fight for you. And he reveals his intention to fight for us by using his special name, Jehovah of hosts, which means he is Jehovah, the king of the angel armies. Amen. Three times in this passage of scripture, God uses his special name, the Lord of hosts or the Lord of armies. He does this to boost our faith. You know, to begin giving, to begin tithing can be a big shift in our lives and it can be a little bit fearful for some, but God wants you to know that he will back you, that he will fight for you when you trust him. God will release angelic ministry in your daily life, whereas up until now, it feels like all you've known is demonic harassment in your finances. God says the enemy might have been fighting against you, but now I am fighting for you. God says, I'm going to take you from cursed to first. I want you to be the head and not the tail. And we're going to pray, but before we do that, church, this is what I want to leave you with. This thing is supernatural from start to finish. When we obey God in matters of tithing and matters of giving, he involves himself directly and supernaturally in the day-to-day -day of our life, in the material realm of our life. Failure to give can bring a curse. And what is that? That is supernatural opposition to your productivity. That's what a curse is. Supernatural opposition to your productivity. But now God says he's going to open for you a supernatural window. God says he's going to open for you a supernatural blessing. Pour out a supernatural blessing. He's going to speak a supernatural word against the devourer. He's going to give supernatural strength to what you grow, supernatural strength to your fruit and your crop. He's going to command a supernatural transformation of your land, of your life situation. And he's going to cause others to see the supernatural favor on your life. And he says he's going to send his angel armies to be the fence around your field. And let's pray. How many of you want to pray into that? Let's pray into that tonight. Amen. I'm going to move this up here because I want to make space. And also because I'm short. But I want us to stand. And you know what? If you want to pray into this, and we're going to pray into every single one of these things. And if you want to join us, I want to invite you to come. Just come quickly up to the front. And um, let's unite our voices together. Thank you, Jesus. He says, test me now with this, says the Lord of hosts, to see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you, pour out a blessing for you until there's not enough room to contain it. And I'll rebuke your devourer. He shall not decay the fruit of your ground against you, nor shall your vine mis miscarry against you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. How many of you want to be a delightful land, not a desert? Everybody kind of just scooch in. You can come all the way up to the front step and just make space for those that are coming behind. And we're going to pray together. We're going to make some declarations together. 
We're going to speak against the devourer. We're going to rebuke the devourer. We're going to loose the work of God. God has said he wants to send you his angel armies. And we're going to pray that his angel armies will come in and be the fence around your field so that nothing can come in and ravage your crop. And out of everything that you've sown, life will come forth. Amen. And we're going to preserve. We're going to retain. We're going to hold on to the crop that we've sown, and it's not going to be devoured. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands to him. And I want you to pray. I know you don't need to repeat what I'm going to say, but I want you to pray with me. Father, would you forgive us, Lord, for not bringing tithes and offerings, Lord, as we ought to. Father, would you forgive us for not having generous hearts, Lord. Lord, those times when we've been less than generous, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Lord, the times when we could have helped, the times when we could have done something, Lord, even if it was five bucks to help someone who was in need. Father, we ask that you would forgive us, Lord, for not having generous hearts, like you, Lord, because your word says that you send your rain on the just and on the unjust alike. So give us generous hearts like you have. Your word says, Lord, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, how for your sakes, though he was rich, he made himself poor. And we thank you for that, Jesus. Would you just thank Jesus that he impoverished himself for your sake to make you rich? And I don't mean just that to make you a millionaire. I mean that we've enjoyed the riches of his grace in every area of his life. He left the splendor of heaven and gave up all of those things to make you rich in every area of life. Father, tonight we come. And Lord, we want to prove you, Lord, not in a presumptuous way, but we want to test you in this, as your word says, Lord, in a way that will bring you honor, in a way that demonstrates that we have faith, in a way that demonstrates, Lord, that we trust you, that you can do more out of our 90% than we could do with our 100% without your help, Lord God. Lord, that we can do more with your stamp on it than without, Lord God. So Father, tonight, as we're dealing with our hearts, Lord God, and we ask you to tear out any root, Lord, any iniquity, any generational thing of stinginess, Lord, would you tear it out of us? Ask the Lord, come on, ask the Lord, say, Lord, the stinginess in my family line, it ends with me. Father, the stinginess in our family lines, it ends with us. Lord, we repent from stinginess, from a grasping spirit, from a spirit of poverty, from a spirit of hoarding, from a spirit that holds on. Lord, because your word says there is one who does not release, but instead it just only tends to poverty, but there is one who gives and it tends to increase, Lord. So Lord, right now, tonight, we cut off the root of all stinginess and lack of generosity in our own lives and whatever iniquity of hoarding has come down to us from our pasts. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us by Jesus' blood. Thank you, Lord, that you're faithful and just. Your word says if we confess our sins, that you'll forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, now with, with that behind us, Lord, with stinginess behind us tonight, we can turn to you with faith. You're a promise-keeping God. Lord, we can stand in faith and humility before you. And, God, right now, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we ask you for these blessings that you promised to your people in Malachi. Three. So, Father, tonight we begin by asking that you will give us an open window. Lord, the window has been closed for many, but, Father, we pray that you would open the window, Lord. We have not had a way into the blessing of your house because the window has been closed. But, Father, you say that you will open the windows of heaven. Come on, church, lift your voice, and I want you to cry out to God and ask him to open the window. Come on, ask him to open the windows for you. Lord, would you open the windows of heaven? Open the windows of your house, Lord. Open the windows of your house, Lord. The place of provision. The place of your treasury, Lord God. The place where there is no lack, Lord God. Where there is no need. Where there is no want, Lord God. Open the windows of heaven. Father, I ask that you would position every man, woman, and child in this room in such a way that heaven, that what is in heaven can freely flow down to each one of us. God, would you position us, Lord, so that what is in your house in heaven can freely flow out of your windows, Lord, to each one of us, Lord. Position us, Lord, under the windows. Jesus said, 
Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men would pour into your lap. So I want everybody by faith, hold out your arms like you're expecting, not up to heaven, hold out your arms forward like you were expecting me to dump a big old sack in your lap and say, Jesus, here I am. Lord, here we are tonight. Would you pour because we positioned ourselves under your heavenly windows tonight, Lord God. Father, we have needed your blessing, but the window has been closed. So Father, tonight we ask you to open the window and pour out, pour out, Lord God. We ask you to pour out a blessing now, Lord God. Lord, would you pour out of your generosity? Father, we ask that you would not pour out according to our need, but that you would pour out according to your goodness. Pour out according to your goodness and not according to our need, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would pour out tonight until there is not room enough. Pour out, God, until there is not room enough. Come on, you ask him that. Don't be shy. Come on. You're not, you're not here to pray a polite Greenwich prayer tonight. Come on, say, Father, I have a need, so I'm asking you to pour out unto me, unto me. Father, pour out unto your children, God. Father, we're going to use, we're going to use it right, Lord God. So we need your provision, Lord. We need that grain to come out of those open windows, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, would you say this to me? Say, Father... Fill every vessel. Fill every container. Fill every trunk. Fill every box. Fill every glass. Fill every jar. Fill every pot. Fill every room. Fill every closet. Fill every place of storage. Fill every place of supply. Father, pour out until there is not enough room for your people. Father, pour out until there are not enough containers to hold your generosity, even as you did for the widow when her miracle didn't stop until she ran out of vessels. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we're going we're gonna to roll further into this. We're going to pray right now to rebuke the devourer. Come on, lift a hand to the Lord. Lord, would you rebuke the devourer now for the sake of your people? Father, we ask in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, let nothing eat, let nothing consume, let nothing devour what we are doing. God, let nothing devour what you are doing before the time. God, we ask for the fullness of the crop to come up and not be consumed. Father, we pray against things that fall apart. Father, we pray that things would no longer fail to last as long as they ought to last. Father, we pray against things breaking in our home. We pray against things breaking down prematurely in our home. Father, we pray against mishaps. We pray against accidents. We pray against lousy workmanship. We pray against relationships and contracts and friendships blowing up in our faces, God. Father, we pray for solidity and we pray for stability in everything that we do. God, we pray that you would be the fence and the hedge around everything that we possess, around everything that we own, around our homes, around our yards, around our property, around our effects, around our bank accounts, God, around our automobiles and our trucks, Lord God. Father, we pray that you would rebuke the devourer on our jobs. God, we pray that the enemy will not be able from this night forward to interrupt the trajectory of our careers. God, we pray that the devourer would no longer be able to keep us from prospering in everything that we do. And God, we say tonight in faith because it's what you say, Lord. We say no more miscarriages in the name of Jesus. We ask for fertility to be unhindered in every sphere of life. Father, we ask you to rebuke the enemy that makes the crops to fail. Lord, we ask you to rebuke the one that keeps the fruit from growing to maturity, Lord, whether it be in the job, whether it be in the body, whether it be in any realm. Father, I pray that you would make our vines strong to hold the fruit, that our fruit will remain. God, that all of our fruit would make it to full term, God. 
Father, I pray that every God-given project would come to full term and not be cut short, not be abandoned, that the rug would not be pulled out from under our feet, Lord, that we will not be cut off at the pass. And Father, we ask that you would make us, as you promised, that you would make us a delightful land. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you would improve the situation of every man, woman, and child. Come on, I want you to turn your face to heaven and say, God, improve my situation. Come on, say, God, improve my situation. Come on, this is not selfish. This is between you and God, your covenant partner who has promised to bless you if you obey him. It's for the sake of him establishing your, his covenant in your life, being able to be a testimony to others and being able to be generous to people and to the work of his kingdom. Father, come on, improve our situation, Lord. Improve our situation. Father, every place in our lives that's desert, we ask you to make pools in the wilderness and streams in the desert, Lord. No more dry places. Come on, say that. No more dry places. No more dry places. No more dry places, Lord. Turn my desert into a garden. Lord, take away barrenness in everything that we do, Lord God. And Father, you said three times that you were the Lord of armies, the Lord of angel armies. So Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you would dispatch your angels now, that you would grant victory for your people, Lord. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you would give a decree in heaven for the welfare of your people. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would send your angels now to cancel every foreclosure. God, to cancel every eviction. Lord, to cancel every layoff. God, send your angels to cancel every work stoppage, to cancel every shutdown. Father, send your angels to stop unemployment, to stop reduction in hours, to stop changes in status, changes in benefits. Father, rebuke the devourer for our sake and for your sake, Lord. Send now, God, we pray. Send now the armies of heaven to enforce your decree that your people shall be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give him praise. Always, always. Come on, let's sing that always song. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, God. I will be still and know that you are God. I will be still and 